Cordelia um, says, oh, look upon, look upon me, sir. Hold your hand in benediction over me. You must not kneel. Lear replies, pray, do not mock me. I'm a very foolish, fond old man. Four score and upward, not an hour more or less. And to deal plainly, I fear I'm not in my perfect mind. Methink that I, methinks I should know you and know this man, yet I am doubtful. Maybe let's just go that far. Yeah. Pray, do, pray, do not mock me. Mm -hmm. I thought your Cordelia was great. <laughs> <laughs> Always wonderful. <laughs> yes, I know. This is my breakthrough. No, yeah. Uh, pray. Well, yes, that's a very difficult speech, for instance, because it can be terribly sentimental it, uh, if you're not terribly careful. Um, and uh, the one person who, well, I, I, I try not to be. And I don't mean by that to say that the audience doesn't need a little proper sentimentality every now and then in a rather harsh, cold, long evening that King Lear is. But uh, what I mean is mawkishness, and it's very easy to, to kind of slide into a kind of self-pity in a speech like that, which is very dangerous. And uh, it's easily done. Uh, but so you have to work against it, against that speech. And how would you do that on a line, I am a very foolish, fond old man? Well, you see, there's the line. That's the, that's the, that's the pitfall right there. I am a very foolish, fond old man, you would say. You would like to say, which sounds like, I'm really very, very sweet old thing, and you've got to be gentle with me because I'm just such a dear old soul, which is totally wrong. It's something that um, he means is, he means that he's not just foolish, he's, he's wrong. His whole life has been wrong. His whole. And if you take a hard line on it, then it then it'll work, and then it strangely enough is more moving than if you slide into its uh, obvious sentimentality. So, you you could say, you know, uh, uh, come on, uh, Cordelia, you know, you 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 know, you're looking, uh, you don't mock me, you know, it's uh, I'm a, you know, I'm a foolish, fond old man, I may be, but God damn it, you know, uh, I don't, uh, you you hit it that way, and then it's much realer, and you right, you know what I mean? It's much, uh, you throw that part away. Well, how does it go after that? The Four scored and upwards, not an hour more nor less. That's that's following. Um, yep. I'm a very foolish, fond old oh man. Oh yeah, four, you know, four score upwards. Oh God knows how old I am, but for Christ's sake, yes, go on. And to deal plainly, I fear I'm not a. Yeah, to deal man. plainly, you know, I'm. <laughs> Jesus Christ, I don't think I'm all there. You know, you, you could do all sorts of things with right. it, as long as. You play against, uh, I'm a very foolish, fond old man. You don't want to do that. You don't want to go there. And uh, in the 19th century, it would be sung. Not necessarily. I mean, I don't think, uh, we don't know. There were some rebels in the 19th century. I'm sure that Henry Irving might have had a very interesting line reading on that. Uh, he good. certainly, what? And Gilgood? Well, I never thought of Gilgood as King Lear, you see. It's hard for me to imagine that, and I know that he's done it two or three times. But again, he sang it, I think, a little bit, and uh, I don't see him in those. Wolfert was much more the kind of King Lear th that one looks for than, than somebody like John Gilgood, and probably Larry. I, I, I didn't see his first King Lear. I saw his television King Lear, which he was rather frail, I thought. But, but again, interesting reading, always interesting readings, always advancing, not retreating. And I'm sure there were actors. I'm sure Irving did it. He was a revolutionary in his own way.